Hey guys, still here. Welcome back to From the Depths, where we're going to be making some adjustments to the boat. After one of you guys suggested, uh, can we not make a anti-torpedo system? And uh, to some extent we already have. Goodbye launchers. Uh, to some extent we already have done that in the past. And I'm now going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to use those small missile expansions for it. Uh, we're going to have, let's see, the quad launcher. Is this it? I think this does... Yeah, that's the launch pad. Um, this is going to be an unusual design. Let's see. I'm going to need a lot of these things. If somebody knows where I'm going with this, <laughs> let me know in the comments right now. It's going to be interesting. Uh, by the way, this is going to get really expensive. I'm already looking at just this line. On both sides of the boat, that is. Is just costing me under 8,000 materials. And now we get to fill it in. <laughs> and that cost me another... What, couple grand? Yep. Okay. Uh, now we need gantries. I think this is going to be way too expensive. Oh, we need connectors as well. Hmm. See, the thing that I was thinking is if we can... Let's just quickly set up a connector here. Um, where's the controller? Never mind. Controller here. If we can set this thing up in such a way that... Come on. It's still not connected. If we can set it up in such a way that it's um, one block of missile. What do you mean it's not connected? This thing really does not want to get connected. Alright, so we're going to have a connector first, then a missile controller, then the expansion, missile pod launcher, and you're still not connected. That's because I placed half of them the wrong way around. Yeah, that would do that. Uh, gantry. Here. Oh, actually, that's a bit much. This would be enough. Here's what I'm thinking. No propulsion. Uh, one regulator, one ballast tank. One... Uh, actually, maybe another regulator. And then for the nose, I want to have a missile interceptor. Then we're going to have one ballast tank set up to negative or uh, neutral buoyancy and you just eject a whole load of these things outside of the boat. That would allow me to create a wall of anti-torpedo material. It's just that apparently it does not quite work out this way because I first need a couple of connectors. So we're gonna have to tear off this stuff from the side of the boat. I'm gonna have to try this again. Now, again, hopefully I won't need it, so it's probably way too much of an investment, but I just wanted to see what happens. I just want to see if this uh, could work, and especially how it would look. What would happen if you would uh, just eject a whole load of those small quad thingies outside the boat, on the port and starboard side of it, in case of incoming torpedoes. I think that's all of them. Yep. Okay. Let's go with a couple of connectors first. And we're going to uh, make this a slightly smaller design. Let's see, all the way to the back of the boat. This is probably going to completely mess up my sonar signature, but that's fine for now. Missile expansion, missile pod launcher. For now, of course, they won't be connected just yet, but that's fine. Okay, now the missile uh, controller. And now we can set them up. Perfect. Okay, utility. Two regulators. Not three, two. One ballast tank. And one missile interceptor head. Assigned to all. Uh, we're going to save that as my... Uh, 
A1, considering I'm not using that anymore. And we're going to have the same thing set up over here. A1, load, and assign to all. Now, um, I think we have setting 5 available. Yep, we do. Okay, setting number 5. <coughs> this is going to be interesting. Let's say we have an incoming torpedo. We just fire off these weapons. And... Wow. <laughs> This would be my anti-torpedo barrier going out to meet whatever torpedo comes my way. It's actually not as expensive as I'd expected. But what I wasn't expecting is just how much of a kick those things get as they're being thrown out of the vehicle. Also, it seems that they are quite expensive. Let's see. Um, I'm now going to wait till my uh, weaponry fills up, so my ammo. Almost at eight and a half thousand. I want to see how much it costs me if I want to launch an entire one of those barriers. Eighty-four hundred, eighty-five hundred, and we're full. Away. Still at 8600. It's not as expensive as I thought. For some reason, they're not being rearmed. Ah, there we go. Cost me 3000 to rearm all of those things. Um, we could also make these things launch gradually. A couple of staggered fire it on should fix that. So we're going to have two of those on. And we fire them with one second delay, so we can get a whole screen of these things. Let's see. Wow. <laughs> I like the look of that. Incoming torpedoes, port flank. And these things just get launched all out of the sides, one by one. Look at that. No idea if that's going to work. But we create a massive wall of these things all over the place. So in case a torpedo does happen to get close, this is going to be awaiting it. I'm going to keep these things on. Um, we could actually control them using an automatic control block. Making sure that these things are launched at the moment when we have an incoming weapon. Let's see, effect range, very, very small. Weapon systems um, activate when an enemy missile is coming in. Hostile missile closer than, uh, let's say, 200 meters. Yep, launches, okay. I'm gonna set only one of these things. Speed up the launch delay a little bit. Let's say 0 0.3 seconds. And we're going to have to con uh, copy the same settings over here. So, effect range a little bit. Weapon systems activate when enemy missiles closer. Then, 200. And they're instantly being launched off the sides. What is that, though? Are we taking fire? Quite a bit of noise from those launchers as well. What's going on here? They are set up properly, right? Yeah, they are. <sighs> oh, I think that we might be taking fire topside. Yep. So this is why we are currently launching all of those things. Combat, Seawolf. 
lot of fire going up. Um, my number three battery might be able to do something. Oh, we're actually tracking these warheads. Looks like the anti-missile anti laser system is working. But we are losing blocks here and there. Yep, they're trying to target them. And it is working. The anti-missile laser defense, or anti-laser missile defense, is working. It is taking down those in, uh, incoming weapons. So far, the drone even looks alright. I still haven't upgraded that thing yet, though, so I still need to do that next episode. And it looks like the target's dead. So, we have our first successful test of the laser system. But bloody hell, that took out most of my energy. Look at that. We started at 144,000, and then the laser started getting involved. And now we're down to 34. Okay, we're going to have to do something about that. Resources, RTGs. Um, our RTG propulsion section is in the back here. I don't think we can fit one of those huge ones. Let's make it a line middle. There, now we're getting our power back quite a bit faster. Is that the only threat that we have around here? Yeah, by the looks of it, that was the only thing. Good. That's what happens when you turn off your weapons. Now, one thing I'm wondering about is what happens if I launch set number three. Oh, actually, that's the wrong set. I was trying to find these things. What are you set up as? Group two. Makes sense. Yeah, they can just barely pass by the drone. <laughs> I still like those small missiles. Unfortunately, they are not trackable. So, I cannot press caps lock and see how far they can make it. I would really like it if I could, but that's somehow not included in that particular mod. Anyway, what we could do is hand this thing off to the AI. So we're going to have another um, local weapons controller. That is, if it wants to find a spot to sit in. Oh, it's instantly connected as well, that's nice. Minimum range, no, we have a maximum range of, I don't know, 500? I think it's a very, very short range missile battery. Maybe 750 if we get lucky. Minimum altitude to engage. 10. Uh, maximum speed, not really relevant. I think that should do. Okay, so now we have an additional defensive battery, or a defensive system. How about traversing through this red gate and trying to get to the next zone? For that, I want Virginia to start coming back so we can dock her. You're in Moving control. Now. Moving now. Where is the Virginia, by the way? Oh, it's a little bit off to the stern. Let's see, adjust this, uh, material group 1, keep no resources at all. That means it should hand it off to the Seawolf. Yep, it just did. Okay, let's find some more difficult and more dangerous targets to hunt. Now, I want to make sure that Virginia is connected to our own ship through the docking port on the aft of it, making sure that it also makes the jump to the next uh, sector, because I would really hate to lose that sub, that little bit, uh, that little assistance sub. Now, it was a bit of a mishap there, firing all of these things. I was not really expecting to see them instantly get launched, but of course this thing started detecting the incoming missiles, or the incoming torpedoes, and I completely forgot that we had the anti-missile defense system. And it did work, although not that much. I mean, it took quite a while before it did enough damage to neutralize the missiles. Oh well. 
Now, what else can we do? We could go for an advanced cannon build. I still haven't really built one yet. Um, I think we can post one on the stern. If we make the boat a little longer, that could work. We could have another compartment in the stern and start building an advanced cannon. We should have enough room for that by now. So we could... You know, if we're going to do that, then I'm not going to move out to the next sector just yet. We'll stop. Oh, it's still in patrol mode, isn't it? Yeah. Combat only. I do not want to be moving at high speed when I'm trying to do maintenance on this thing. Okay. How much room would we need? Would that be enough for a turret? I think so. It's not going to be terribly sizable, as you can imagine. I wonder how effective it's going to be. And in case you're wondering, no, I have not yet set up one of these things in the uh, sandbox mode. So I'm not exactly sure how it's going to perform. We're just going to be building it from scratch. See, this is what I like about from the depths. If you have an idea for a new part and you have enough resources, you can just build it out right there and right then. And now we have another uh, extended section of the boat. Okay, propulsion back on. Uh, props, huge props. I think we had about eight on here. We have enough resources, so we might as well. Are we taking fire? No, never mind. Um, primary... <coughs> There's going to be a lot of primary propulsion systems, and I'm not sure if they're even that effective. I think we get diminishing returns. Because this thing is so large, it's really pushing out a lot of water. There. Propulsion check. Skipped one. Why are you not moving? That's unusual. There we go. Full propulsion. Standing by. Rudders. Um, I had these things set up to Y and I, I think. Just make sure it turns the right way. Yep, it does. Okay. So that's set up properly. Now, let's start building a turret. It's going to be building a pretty tall turret by the looks of it. We're going to have a uh, one-axis turret. Whew. That's huge. I have never built a five-meter one. Bloody hell. Um, I'm not even sure how well that would work. Let's try. Right, um, where do we start? Not with a cooling unit, I don't think. Unfortunately, the splitters generally don't work. As you can see, I'm pretty terrible at building turrets. We've been over this before. Uh, here's a thought. <laughs> Just put one of these things on the stern. Oh, that's going to create a massive amount of drag. No, we're not doing that. What about the copperhead? Yeah, that's worse. <laughs> I like the design of it, but we're not putting a copperhead on the stern. Right. Can we start out with the auto loaders? Would that work? Four meter round? We could. Okay, first we're going to design the shell, if we have room for that somewhere. Uh, let's see. 
the ammo controller. Yeah, we have some room right here. Okay, ammo customizers. I'm not sure how much of a shell I can fit in there. The shell nose definitely is going to be... Uh, sorry, which is it? Um, is it in the back? Yeah, the super cavitation base. That's the one that I want to have. Okay, now it's going to be able to maneuver through the water a lot faster. Then... I'm thinking maybe some fins on there. Where do you have those? You see, I'm much, much more of a torpedo guy. Stabilizer fin body. Two of those. Then... Maybe we can build an AP system. Or flax. I'm thinking flax, because what we're dealing with mostly is flyers, which are fast and hard to hit. So we can build a bunch of uh, these things on it. And make them go as quickly as possible. That could work. Let's see, effective range, 1200 meters. Effective range, two clicks. For that I would need a 98mm round, or 95. 3000. We go 120. 2500 meter range. Muscle velocity 196 meters per second. That's not fast enough. We're gonna need more. Shell rear, super cavitation base. 342 meters per second. I'm thinking that whatever I'm firing at is going to be fast. So, if I can make sure that it gets to the target in time while it's still there, that would be helpful. If I go bigger than that... 6,000 meter effective range. We'll never be able to detect anything at that range. So let's go with 120 millimeters. Effective speed, 343 meters per second. Range, three clicks. Gauge increasers required two. Barrel length, 10 meters. Reload time from clip, 6.8 seconds. Hmm. We're probably going to be needing a uh, multi-barreled gun. Otherwise, I don't think that this is going to be too effective. Because I want to be firing a lot of rounds up in the air. Right. Um, where do we start? I know that this is not the right way to start, but I just want to see... <laughs> I basically don't know any other way of doing it. Firing piece. Hmm... Am I working with the spin block or the hull? Right, that's the problem. Now I'm on the spin block. Advanced firing piece. Uh, we're gonna need a splitter. Going down a little bit. A couple of gauge increasers there. Let's start with the end in mind. Number of barrels. Six. We're going to be using quite a few gauge increasers here. 54 millimeters, 71, 104, 121. Now we're getting somewhere. Alright. Um, split it again. A couple of cooling units on there. How much does this thing need? It needs... Oh, we can work with single loaders, actually. If we can work with a 1 millimeter or 1 meter shell, then I could go with a belt-fed autoloader. That would be interesting. Because if I can go with one of those... This is just a test, by the way. Got to turn that thing back on. The uh, mirror mode. We oh, which I wasn't running in the first place. Well, that's nice. If I can have a belt-fed autoloader, 
that would allow me to very, very quickly pump out a lot of rounds. Where's the shell? There. There's the ammo rack. Okay, ammo clips. One meter, or, yeah, one meter rounds. What do you mean you're not connected? You're probably shouting at your monitor right now. What the hell are you doing? Um, not really sure. Not really a turret guy. Okay, all modules. Force assign that. Are they loading yet? Takes 18 seconds. Expected load time is 20 seconds. Are we loading on rounds just yet? We're not, are we? the hell? Oh, the gauge is 150 millimeters at the moment. Um, I... Yeah, I was throwing on gauge increasers. Not cooling units. That's the problem. Okay, gauge increasers, cooling units. That's probably why it wasn't accepting rounds. Force a sign. Really, if it's a 121 millimeter round, it doesn't fit? Oh. Where did I get the idea it's a one millimeter or one meter round? I must have overlooked something. Uh, we need a two meter round, or a two meter shell. So, my whole autoloader idea, nice, but not really going to fly. Get those connectors off. Still checking for threats in the meanwhile. Nothing there. Advanced cannons, autoloaders, two millimeter or two meter autoloader. Ammo clips. And then we need a couple of those input feeders. Yep, now I'm hearing the click-click of it being loaded. Good. Progress. Uh, let's set this thing to slot number four, which I think is available. Yeah, it is. And that one's going to be number four as well. And we can continue to build it. Mantlet. It's going to have to be a maximum elevation mantlet. 2mm AA. Because this thing, for all intents and purposes, is an AA turret. Which... I have offset. Damn it. You have to be kidding. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna have to probably move the thing around. Barrel. I think the optimal barrel length said 10 meters. Yep, 10.3 meters. Ah, oh, damn it. Team speak. Sorry about that. That was my computer, not yours. Okay, so the weapon is loaded. Yep, we have 16 shells wrecked in the clips. 20 shells. Now we're going to have to see if we can fire this thing. Oh, come on, I want the external viewer. There we go. Weapon system number two, firing tests. Why are you not rotating? Possibly because I'm too far away from it. Oh, we're firing at something. There's a target off to our south. Priority. What are we looking at? There. A sea adder. Very cheap unit. Probably not a threat. Okay, so let's move to the back. What is going on with my interface? Um, I need a... I need a way through here. Yep, 
Yeah, now I can get to my turret. Why are you not moving? Aha! That would probably have something to do with it. So I have set this thing up as number two. And that one is number four. Yeah, that's wonderful. Let's go back to the control room. If I can find my way back to there. What is going on with that turret? I don't get it. It should be set up to the proper system right now. But I think that half of it might be connected to the hull. We did build this whole thing on top of the turret, right? Yeah, we did. Maybe it's because of these blocks are in the way. Would that fix it? Or is that we be because we have another system on? I'm not sure what's going on here. But something is definitely going on with this turret. Built the whole damn thing on a different block. Um, new objects. No, not a spin block. A one axis turret. And is that the middle of the boat? Yes, it is. Okay. Advanced cannons, gauge increase. No, that, sorry, that doesn't work. Um, six way connectors. I know it's a triple wave doing it, whatever. I just really fucking hate turrets. Mantlets. Two millimeter elevation mantlets. Barrels. A couple of four millimeters. I wanna have a muzzle brake on there as well. There. Now we're gonna set it up to be six barrels going to have... where are you? Gauge increasers, splitters. Caliber, 71 millimeters. 88, 104, 121. Good enough. We can even add on one cooling unit already. Splitter. Let's mirror that thing. More cooling units. Like that. And then we throw on those odd loaders. I would love for somebody else to build this thing, by the way, because as you can see, not my thing. I'm much happier building torpedoes or designing missiles or something like that. Input feeder. Force sign. There we go. You, set up number two. We have something else on number two slot. That is probably the problem. Might be our AA. Not sure. Uh, switch to number four. And you, switch to number four. Um, B, 3, P. We're dumping a lot of ammunition in the water. And the thing refuses to spin. What is going on now? Oh, there we go. It actually, sorry, it is working. Sort of. Um, wow, 
Wow, not bad. Speed, 317 meters per second. What I would like this thing to be is um, a sort of a minigun. But I've never really been successful at designing those. So I'm not exactly sure what it would take to build one of those. And now we can freely spin that turret around. Let's see. I need to set up probably a... A delay? Firing second delay? Maximum rate of fire? No. That's not it really. Maybe just the delay. Uh, set delay to one second. It's still loading. Loading takes quite a while. See, that's why I just never get these things working. How many rounds do you have loaded? 36 shells wrecked in the clips. So that should be enough. Effective shell load time, 9.2 seconds. Oh, sorry, that's effective time. Autoloader time increased by 1.41 due to excessive complexity. That's probably because I have too many autoloaders on there. Okay, I'm going to need you guys help with that. If you can design me one of these things as a sub-object and send that to my email, link to that is in the description down below, then I will happily use your turret system because mine is shitty. What we did get this episode is the anti-missile defense system or the anti-torpedo system for the sides of the boat and of course the extension where your turret can sit because I am surely not going to be designing an effective one, I can tell you that much. Anyway, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for more episodes.